Hello, this is Keith All, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be diving into DAX, uh, dynamic uh, expressions uh, using Power Pivot in Excel 365. And uh, today we're going to be talking about basically two DAX functions to calculate and account rows. Basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be determining uh, the total number of transactions in my data model, uh, specifically filtering out those transactions by store ID. In this case, we're going to be looking at all the transactions with a store uh, country within Canada. So let's uh, first of all, let's go into my data model, which I already uploaded. And so if you go to the Power Pivot tab, go over here to Manage on the left. And I'm going to first go to the Diagram View. And so this is my data model. And what we're going to be specifically looking at is the Store Lookup Table and the Transaction Table. And what connects these two together is the store ID. So as you can see, if I hover over the, uh, the line here, store I lookup is connected to the transactions table by the store ID. So let's go back to the uh, data view and then let's, we'll come back to this in a second, but let's go back to Excel. And basically I have a pivot table I already set up and it's pulling all the tables from my data model. And basically what I'm doing here in this table is I want to know all the transactions associated with each country. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm going to the customer lookup table and I'm pulling in customer country and I'm putting that into the rows and then uh, for the values here over to the right, I'm going to the transactions table and I'm pulling in a measure that I already uh, created and I'll show you that in a second. It's called total transactions and that goes in the values area. And this is what the total transactions brings back for this pivot table. And of course, it's going to calculate the total transactions for each country, as you can see. Now let's first see what the total transactions uh, measure is, which is this table right here. So basically what the total transactions brings back is the total number of transactions within my transactions table. So let's go up here to power pivot, measures, management measures, and I'm looking for the total transactions measure that I already created, which is right here. So the function is I'm using the DAX count rows function and I'm passing that a table which is transactions. So let's go back here. So what count rows does, it counts the number of rows in a specified table which is this table right here. So let's go back to the data view. So I'm in a data view and I'm looking at my transactions table and I have no filters on it right now. So basically what count rows does, it counts every single row in this table and it comes back with a number. So if I can press control down arrow, you can see over here to the left that the total number of transactions or records in this table equals the 269,720. And that matches up with this uh, number here and of course, this right here, it adds all this up. So that's number one. Number two is, uh, let's look at the calculate function. Now the calculate function has two arguments. The second argument is optional, but the first argument is the expression. This is the core calculation of this um, function. The filters argument, again, it's optional, but in this case, I'm using one filter and it's used to restrict the data used in the calculation. 
So let's talk about the order of evaluation. So how does this evaluate? First of all, the filters argument gets evaluated first. So DAX first evaluates the filters specified in the arguments. And this creates a temporary filter context. Now, after uh, Excel or uh, the calculate function evaluates the filter argument or arguments, it then uses that to go to the total transactions, which is the expression. So expression argument is evaluated last. So DAX then evaluates the expression, like I said, and this means that the calculation is performed only on the data that meets the specified filter criteria. So in other words, once it goes to the store lookup table, it finds all store countries in that table that equal to Canada. Once it has that, then it goes to this total transactions expression or measure, and then it uh, calculates the total transactions based upon what gets returned from this filter. So let's go into the data view. And uh, of course, the first thing that the calculate function evaluates is the filter argument. So in this case, uh, um, since store lookup table is connected to the transactions table, I'll show you, and it's connected through the store ID, then I have to go to the store lookup table in the data view, store lookup, and then it goes to the store country field. Let's pull everything out of this table that equals Canada. So let's go up here, let's deselect that, and let's just select Canada, click OK. So we have two records from this table. Now what connects this table to the transactions table is the store ID field, which is here. So we know that we're, we need to look for the store ID in the transactions table that equals 19 or 20. So let's go back here to the transactions table and let's filter the store ID by 19 and 20. Click OK. And so this will then be your answer. If you look down here, the, uh, uh, the total transactions now equals 16,091 because Canada only exists in store ID 19 and 20. So let's go back here. As you can see, it matches up with this. So that's basically how the calculate function works, including the measures that I showed you and the count rows. So this is a good way to analyze what the calculate function returns and the steps you need to take in order to ver verify the uh, results of the calculate function. Hopefully this gave you a better idea on what the calculate function does in DAX and then uh, uh, you could use it in future analysis to use the calculate function for anything else that you need to look at. So again, thank you for stopping by. Remember to like and share this video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm to get this video out to more people. Again, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye now.